Hey everyone, so in this video I wanted to continue my coverage of Unity 21.1. In this case, I want to look at the free to use 3D modeling mod by Unity called Pro Builder. So even though it's by Unity, it's not built right in. The reason why I want to do this is twofold. One, just awareness. A lot of new developers don't realize that Pro Builder even exists. They think they might have to go to Blender or, you know, I have a lot of tutorials about 3D Builder. But if you can actually make at least your placeholder graphics in Unity, that will really help you with productivity because that's one last time you have to shut out Unity and open something else up and then learn how to use that app. So the more you can do in, in Unity itself, at least in the early days, the better off you are. And then you don't have to worry about the, all those extra project files. You know, where do you save and name your 3D Builder or your Blender files? It's all just built right into your project. So I'm a big fan of being able to create your, your primitives and your placeholder graphics right in Unity. Okay, so the way you install this, you just go to Window, you go to Package Manager, you make sure this is Unity Registry, and you click on Pro Builder, and that will install it. Once you do that, you get this new Tools menu, Pro Builder, and Pro Builder Window. Now, just so you know, the window over here for Pro Builder is contextual. So depending on what you're doing depends on what you see there. I also want to point out that you have four different modes. You have the object select mode. You have vertex mode. So those are the individual points. You have the edges, which are points connected. So the line between the points. And then you have facings, which are basically the shapes that those edges combine. So that's how a lot of 3D models work, it are the vertex, edge, and facings. So this really gives you parity with those. So let's actually create a shape. And just to clarify, again, this is mainly for awareness, and this is to get you started, because to do a complete uh, tutorial for Pro Builder is hours and hours. So depending on if you guys want to see more, uh, I certainly can do additional tutorials for this. But since it's free to use, you can just download it and, you know, have at it. So let's click on New Shape. And this window is different from what it used to be. So the images here correspond to the shape dropdown. So if you click on this, you can see arch, that's an arch, cone, that's a cone, so on and so forth. So uh, pivot. This is basically when you rotate the object, will it pivot on the first corner or will it pivot on the center? So obviously the pivot and origin are very important to, to depend on what you're trying to do. And then these will change as you are dynamically creating the object. So a cube isn't ter terribly interesting to look at, but we'll use that because it's easy. So we will just so you select the shape and then you just see how there's like a point where my mouse is you just left click drag let go of the mouse and now it automatically goes into extrusion mode which means if i move up or down it's now extruding okay so i'm not holding the button i'm just moving the mouse and we click and there you go you've made your first shape congratulations now there are a ton of tools here, so I'm going to look at just a few of them, and I also want to look at some of the modes up here. So I mentioned vertex mode. So right now you only have, I believe, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight vertices. So you have the corners. So even though you have this pattern here, that's just the visual. Those aren't actual vertices, because if I click here, I'm not selecting anything. But if I click here, now you can see You've got the typical X, Y, Z. So I can actually just move that corner. And now you've gone from a cube to this kind of slant. Okay. Now it's just Control Z undo. So like I said, be mindful of what mode you're in. So this is the object as a whole. That's vertex. So now you could do, say, an edge. So let's try that again. So now you can see that the selector there is in the middle. So this is a whole edge you're moving now. So now you've gone from just a boring block to um, a, a, a slant. Similar to the other one, but whereas the one was based on the point, this one is now the entire edge being moved. Okay. Again, we'll control Z undo that. Now in this case, the facing doesn't make much of a difference because that's kind of just like the extruding because there are no additional points here. So let's change that. 
So let's look at, and there are just so many choices. Let's do subdivide, okay? So make sure you have the selection proper and then you do subdivide. And now you can see there are four sections. So suddenly this is very different. I can click on that vertex and do that. And the reason why it bends here is because there's other vertices here. So you'd have to select those as well. So we'll control Z undo that. And you could move one of these. And now that's different again, because you have these additional control points. So last time it raised the whole thing. Now it only raises some of those. And this is just one tool. I'm just extruding it out. Obviously you could do a lot more and you can say, push down in too. So maybe you want an indentation or maybe you want this to be somewhat hollow. Okay. So you can do that. And again, the effect may not be that great, but we also don't have that many uh, vertices at the moment. Vertexes. I'm going to just keep pronouncing it differently every time. So if we go back to, uh, did we do edges? So like this, rather than moving can move just like one edge. All right, so you can actually further subdivide these. So if you go to facings and we select all four, that's just me holding CTRL. So the typical click and hold CTRL. Although one thing you need to be careful of is depending on what you're doing, you may wind up selecting sides that you're not looking at. So be mindful of that. Usually that's if you're using like a lasso mode that you might be grabbing things on um, that's that's blocked and you don't realize you have. But you can subdivide these again. And so now you have even more squares. So I'm, I, I certainly don't want to waste your time. I just want to really impress upon you that this is incredibly easy to use now. You could even use this to maybe make a preliminary environment. So maybe you don't want to mess around with a terrain tool. And so you've seen a lot that you can do using just the shape tool to make the shape. And then we use the subdivide object to break it up into more um, edges, uh, more vertexes, edges, and facings. Uh, and then you can do a lot more. So you can also like merge faces and so on and so forth. Like I said, that this is a, this would be an enormous tutorial. This would take hours to go through. So, I think I think I'm just going to do one or two more quick ones but again even without getting really fancy with the tools you can still manipulate this in very um, impressive manners again you're just subdividing and then moving either a vertex or multiple vertexes edges or multiple edges okay so actually let's do that because right now I haven't really done that so say I want to move that edge and sorry, I wasn't I wasn't uh, grabbing edges. So say I want to grab those two. You could do that. So they don't have to be consecutive. And let's just make, like I said, one or two more shapes. And then I think that will be about it. Because again, this is mainly just for awareness and an introduction. So let's go back to new shape. And let's see. So this is something that you would use in uh, a game and that is stairs so you can see again the shape corresponds to the shape pivot do you want it to be the first corner or the center and then there's things like what's the step count and what's the circum circumference do you want there to be sides so if i left click and do this okay so this is just changing the size so the x changed and then you extrude up so if you notice Extruding up doesn't change the amount of stairs. It's just changing the size of the stairs. So you do have to be mindful of what this is set to, okay? And that kind of messed it up trying to change it in mid, in uh, mid drawer. So we'll just go to, um, also I had changed it to a ridiculous number. So let's change it to like 16 and then we draw again. So there's our stairs. Remember again, the first you're drawing the uh, plane and then you're extruding. Now you have stairs. And 
and I believe circumference is if you want them to be round. So let's change that. Could be wrong. I'm trying to remember. So let's do this. Yeah, so that gives it curvature. So there you go. So maybe you're making a tower and you need stairs to be going along the tower. You can use that as well. And like I said, you, you, you could do examples just using the shapes, never mind all the other tools. And if you guys want to see some demonstrations, uh, just let me know. So uh, leave a like, leave a comment saying, hey, can you show how to use this tool? Like, for instance, there is, um, I believe there's a carving tool. Yeah, there's a cut tool. That one I think will probably be very helpful uh, in 3D Builder. One of my favorite tools that in that is the split tool because it kind of lets you, lets you shave away and so creates a feeling as if you're actually carving up the object. So, okay, so I think that should do it for this tutorial. Again, if uh, there's anything you want to see, just leave a comment and say, hey, can you do a demonstration of this? And I'll do my best. I am certainly not an expert when it comes to 3D modeling. That is one of the reasons why I'm so happy that they built up 3D Builder. I thought they had abandoned it because I think it had been quite some time since there'd been an update. So I was really happy to see this. And I forgot what the date was, but I think it said like April 8th, which is just like four days ago. So it is a fairly new build. So yeah, I hope this has been helpful and please enjoy the rest of your day.